time machines quite literally exist and they are the telescopes we use to look back to the beginning of the universe. And by far one of the telescopes that has been in the news the most this year is the James Webb Space Telescope. And for good reason, this thing is absolutely incredible. This massive telescope travelled over a million kilometres away from the Earth, is 22 metres wide and has a mirror three times the size of Hubble. What really makes JWST stand out compared to Hubble is the type of light that it collects. Hubble is primarily a UV and visible light telescope, meaning a lot of what it collects is what we could theoretically see with our eyes. This is great for a range of science and incredibly important. However, when you go back in time, further back in the universe, that light starts to disappear. It's something we call dropout. Because the universe is expanding and light is getting stretched, we need to look in longer wavelengths. And it turns out infrared is the perfect one, at least to see the beginning of galaxies. Now, there's a major problem with infrared, and that is that most of our atmosphere absorbs or emits it. So it is incredibly hard, if not near impossible, to get really great results for early universe from right here on Earth. And that is exactly why we had to launch James Webb. It is the only way we can solve the mysteries of the early universe. I want to jump back though and really break down why can we see back in time when we look out into the universe. Our universe is bound by several laws of physics and one of the best known ones is the speed of light. And when we talk about light here, we're talking about the speed of all of the electromagnetic radiation, everything from gamma rays to radio waves. In a perfect vacuum, each travels at about 300,000 kilometers a second. It is insanely fast. Light travels so fast in our everyday life, everything appears to be pretty instantaneous. You don't see a time delay in your reference point here on Earth, but you do anytime you look up. When you see the moon, you see it as it was 1.3 seconds ago. That light took time to get to your eyes. And the further out we go, the more dramatic it becomes. The sunlight that we see during the day is about eight minutes old meaning the sun could theoretically disappear and we wouldn't know for eight whole minutes. So even on these really tiny scales, we can see the difference that that speed of light makes to what we're observing. And the further out we look, the more back in time we see. Some of the first images from JWST included the Carina Nebula, this absolutely stunning image of thousands of baby stars being born amongst the dust and gas. What we're seeing is what this nebula looked like 7,500 years ago. That is 2,000 years older than our first recorded piece of writing. So again, everything we see is as it once was, which is amazing because it means we can study things throughout time and kind of build up a more complete picture of how things evolve and change. Now we can use light all across the spectrum to try and figure out the physics of an object, say a galaxy. We can use radio, x-ray, UV, visible light to try piece together all of the different things that are happening. But this only works for something that's relatively close to us where that light hasn't been stretched too far. In short, that light is losing energy and becoming longer wavelengths. JWST is helping us see this before now invisible universe. We can take that infrared light, figure out how far it has traveled and what it would have been when it was emitted. Taking into account the size of the mirror, the superb pixel resolution, and the fact we can do spectroscopy with JWST, it truly is the most powerful time machine we have ever built. And when you're using time machines, some pretty wacky things will happen. One of my favorites is that the distance that we see these galaxies is not the same as the age of them. For example, if we see a galaxy that's about 13 billion light years old, it is now likely over 40 billion light years away from us. This is because of that expansion of the universe compounding over the entire age of the universe. It really is mind blowing. What is causing the expansion is something we call dark energy. And currently we think this is a constant 
built into the fabric of space and time. But we are always trying to understand this better. The great thing about dark energy is that currently it only works on incredibly large scales, meaning we can see no effect of it in a place like our Milky Way. Thankfully, the science that JWST is going to give us is nothing short of remarkable. Using it, we can try and piece together what the very first stars in the universe might have looked like, how they grouped together, how galaxies formed and evolved to the shapes that we see now, and we can even use it a little bit closer to home. One of the most amazing things that you can do with this telescope is actually get atmospheres of exoplanets. This is absolutely game changing because one of the best ways for us to figure out habitability of a planet is to figure out what's in its atmosphere. We, after all, are trying to look for an Earth 2.0. One of the biggest questions in science in general is how special are we? How unique is our solar system? Unique is the Earth? And if it's not, how many other life forms exist out there just waiting to say hello? I thought I'd wrap up by just looking at these beautiful images because it's amazing. If humans happen to be the only intelligent thing in the universe, that means we are the only ones who have ever seen the universe look quite like this. I cannot wait to see what comes next out of JWST. And if there's any topics that you would like me to cover, leave them in the comments below.